Hello there. Thanks for stopping by Max's Cards and Dice Dugout. This is episode number 107. And we have Downey Games Fast Action Racing back on the table. For continuation of the 1991 stock car project, we are up to race number 17. We're back at Talladega. And it's a hot day on July 28th, 1991 for the Die Hard 500. Talladega is a 2.66 mile tri-oval. Uh, looks like we have no change in the contact and a plus one on mechanical for this race. Uh, and uh, on July 28th, 1991, in real life, Sterling Marlin was the pole sitter. And leading the most laps and winning the race was Dale Earnhardt. Now, before we set the field, let's take a look at the standings after race 16 at Pocono. And you can see... Davey Allison has finally passed Bobby Hamilton, but the rookie is only six points behind. The rest of the top ten is Rusty Wallace, Harry Gant, Sterling Marlin, Alan Kowicki, Bill Elliott, Chad Little, Ricky Rudd, and Dale Earnhardt. Now, we have been keeping an eye on Earnhardt, not because he's my favorite driver. I admit that would be uh, Ernie Irvin, at least from this period. Uh, Irvin was my favorite, but we've been watching Dale Earnhardt because he was... The real life uh, cup winner that year 1991 and he had been stuck in 14th place for five or six races i don't recall how many but it was five or six and now he's finally broken into the top 10 so we'll see if he uh, keeps moving up or what happens as we go forward all right so uh, here's the uh score sheet so that's the bookkeeping i'll be doing off camera and as i always say if you haven't watched one of these races before, I always mention before I set the field that this is not a representation of position on the track, but rather a, or should I say, an abstraction uh, of uh, various actions that occur on the track and the cars and drivers that are involved in those situations. So first thing we're going to do, shuffle the driver cards. And I'll give them a cut or two. And then we'll set the field and get this race underway. July 28th, 1991. All right. I think that's pretty good. Cut. And we'll set the field. And first one is Ernie Irvin. Lake Speed, Derek Cope, Rick Mast, Brett Bodine, Terry Labonte, Bobby Hamilton, Jimmy Spencer, Ted Musgrave, Joe Rootman, Hud Strickland, Bill Elliott, Michael Waltrip, Sterling Marlin, Kyle Petty, Rick Wilson, Stanley Smith, and Mickey Gibbs, Harry Gant, Richard Petty, Larry Pearson, Dale Jarrett, Morgan Shepard, Bobby Hillen Jr., Dale Earnhardt, Darrell Waltrip, Rusty Wallace, Alan Kowicki, Dave Marcus, Chad Little, Ken Schrader, Points leader Davey Allison, Jeff Bodine, Ricky Rudd, Jimmy Means, and Mark Martin. Okay, so first thing we do, as always, is determine the pulse sitter. And uh, we're going to read the white die first, just to be different. We got a 13, so we will check. For 13 for the pole sitter in the uh, pole position box. And that's going to be Davy Allison. So we'll put this marker here for Allison for now. And we'll start recording our data. So Davy Allison gets the pole. And he's going to face a challenge. This is actually, uh, I guess, you know, before we get into phase one. 
which is a going to be a mechanical check. So it's very, very early in the race, and he is going to face a challenge, and that challenge is coming from 21, Dale Jarrett. Okay, so Jarrett's challenging for the lead early in this race. Okay, Dale Jarrett is a 10. Davy Allison is Davy Allison is an 11. However, <clears throat> for this first challenge only, the pole sitter gets a plus one. So he becomes a 12. So this challenge is coming at a minus two. Jarrett needs a nine to 12. He rolls a seven and fails. So Davy Allison remains the leader. Okay, and as I just mentioned, first uh, phase is going to be a mechanical check. So we'll randomly select a driver for adjacent, and we'll check the uh, mechanical ratings, which are the red box on the driver cards. All right, so it's going to be 35, which will be Ted Musgrave. So it's Musgrave. Rusty Wallace is his 12 o'clock. Chad Little is his 3. Daryl Waltrip is his 6. And Bobby Hillen Jr. is his 9. Okay, so we're looking at the uh, red... Mechanical avoidance rating, and here it's a plus one. So if the die roll is great, uh, equal to the mechanical rating, uh, driver's had a mechanical issue, has gone behind the wall, is out or back there for several laps, many laps, and he's going to get a red lap marker saying he is, you know, way behind the field, many laps down. If it's greater than the mechanical rating, he's forced to retire. Now here, because of the plus one, the chances are a little bit less than the average track on the circuit. It is probably the best way to describe that. So Ted Musgrave is an eight. He becomes a nine. So he needs an eight or less. He rolls a six and passes. So Musgrave passes. Next is Rusty Wallace. Rusty Wallace is a six. He becomes a seven. He needs a six or less. He rolls a seven, and Rusty Wallace, unfortunately, has to come in because of some mechanical issue. And there are provisions in the game where you can check, you know, you can roll to determine what those issues are. Uh, but I'm just not going that deep into it. I haven't been for any of these races. So anyway, Rusty Wallace fails, and he gets a red lap marker. Next is Chad Little. Chad Little's an 8. He becomes a 9. He needs an 8 or less. He rolls a 10, and he is forced to retire. Well, some big problems for Chad Little early in the race, and he is out. So, fail. DNF. Okay, next is Darrell Waltrip. And where is Darrell Waltrip? Here he is. He's an 8. He becomes a 9. He needs an 8 or less. He rolls a seven and passes. And the last check will be Bobby Hillen Jr. He's a seven. He becomes an eight. He needs a seven or less. And he rolls that seven. And he also passes. And after all that, because Davy Allison was not involved, he remains the leader. And at the end of phase one, he will now face another challenge. And that challenge is coming from 44, Hut Strickland. Okay, Strickland's an 11, Allison is an 11. <clears throat> Excuse me, so the challenge is at zero. Strickland needs a 7 to 12 to take the lead. And he rolls a 9, and we have a new race leader in Hut Strickland. Pass. And Strickland is the new leader. Okay, now we go into phase 2, which is a phase of green flag racing. So select a random driver. For adjacent, they will all go up against Hutch Strickland, at least initially, and we use the quality pass matrix to determine whether or not they are successful. So, first driver is 
53. And that's going to be Sterling Marlin. So it's Marlin. His 12 is Davey Allison. His 3 is Jimmy Means. His 6 is Ken Schrader. And his 9 o'clock is Dave Marcus. So we're looking at the green race rating. So the first one is going to be Sterling Marlin. He and Hut Strickland are both 11s. This challenge is at zero. He needs a seven to 12. He rolls an eight. We have a new leader in Sterling Marlin. Now, the rest of these checks will go up against Marlin as long as he remains the leader. So that's a pass for Marlin. And he takes the lead. Next will be Davey Allison. Marlin and Allison are both 11s. Allison needs a seven to 12 to take the lead. He rolls a seven and gets the lead back. That's a pass, and it's Allison again. So, so far in this race, most of the activity has been going on right here. All right, so now the next check is Jimmy Means. He's going up against Davey Allison. Now, Jimmy Means is only a two. Davey Allison is an, Davey Allison is an 11. That makes this a minus nine. That is an automatic failure. Jimmy Means was not trying to take the lead. He was trying to stay on the lead lap. So he gets a green lap marker. He's one lap down. Green lap markers are cumulative. Okay. So that's a failure for Means. And he gets a green. Whoops. Allison. Still the leader. And he gets a green lap marker. Okay. Next is Ken Schrader. He's an 11. Allison's an 11. Another check at zero. Schrader needs a 7 to 12. He rolls a five and fails. His check, Davey Allison remains the leader. And last is Dave Marcus. He's a six. Allison's an 11. That's a minus five. It's an automatic failure, but he remains on the lead lap because it is not a greater than minus five. It would have to be a minus six to be a lap down like Jimmy Meads. Okay, so we go through that phase. Marcus fails. And Davey Allison remains the race leader. Now we're going to have green flag pit stops. And uh, just like the uh, green flag racing, it will be a random driver for adjacent. And they will all go up against the leader. But this time, instead of using the green race rating, we'll be using the blue pit crew rating and the quality pass matrix once again. So this challenge, whoops, wrong die. This challenge is coming from 22, Rick Mast. So it's Mast. His 12 is Morgan Shepard. Right there. Dale Earnhardt is his 3 o'clock. Dale Jarrett is his 6 o'clock. And Harry Gant is his 9 o'clock. Okay, so these are green flag pit stops. So we're looking at the blue pit crew rating. Allison's an eight, Mast is an eight, challenge is at zero. Mast needs a seven to 12. He rolls an eight and he takes the lead. So that's a pass and it's Rick Mast in the lead. Okay, so now Morgan Shepard will be going up against Rick Mast. <clears throat> Excuse me, both eights. Once again, it's at a zero. Shepard needs a seven to 12. He rolls a six and fails. Rick Mast remains the race leader. Fail, and it's still Mast. Now, Dale Earnhardt. Now, Dale Earnhardt is a 10. He has a high pick crew rating of a 10. Mast is an eight. This check is at a plus two. Earnhardt needs a five to 12 to take the lead. He rolls a seven. And we got a new leader in Dale Earnhardt. So that's a pass. And it's Earnhardt. Okay, now it'll be Dale Jarrett. Jarrett's a 7. Earnhardt's a 10. Challenge is at a minus 3. He needs a 10 to 12. He rolls snake eyes and fails. And then the final check will be Harry Gant, who is a 9. Earnhardt 
has that 10. So this, this challenge is at a minus one. Gant needs an eight to 12. And he rolls the eight and takes the lead. So after all the green flag pit stops, Harry Gant is the race leader. Now we're going to see if there were any penalties uh, during those pit stops. And we'll do a random driver and four adjacent. And we're going to be looking at the pit crew rating. All right. And that is going to be 64, Stanley Smith. So it's Smith. 12 o'clock is Mark Martin. 3 o'clock wraps over to Richard Petty. Six o'clock is Jimmy Means. Now, I believe he can be part of this. Yes, he can, because uh, yes, if he was a yellow or a red lap driver, he would be black flagged and removed from the race. But he is only a lap down. This is not the closing phases of the race. Jimmy Means can take part in this. So Jimmy Means is the six o'clock. And Davey Allison is the 9 o'clock. Okay, so we're looking at the blue pit crew rating again. And we're rolling two dice. And it has to be equal or lower if uh, to the pit crew rating. And if it's higher, uh, he's forced to come in for a stop and go and ends up being a lap down. In Jimmy Means' case, he would end up being two laps down. But first, let's check Stanley Smith. So he needs a four or less. He rolls a 10 and had some infraction while he was in the pits. He has to come back in, does a stop and go, and he's a lap down. So it's a fail and a green lap marker. Next is Mark Martin. He is an 8. He needs an 8 or less. He rolls a 9 and he had an issue in the pits as well. So Mark Martin comes in for a stop and go along with Stanley Smith so far, and he goes a lap down. Okay, next is Richard Petty, who is the three o'clock. And Richard Petty's an eight, he needs an eight or less. And he rolls that eight, so he's safe, he passes. Next is Jimmy Means. Means is a six, he needs a six or less. And anything higher, he's gonna go two laps down. But he rolls a three, and he's safe. Pass. And the last check will be Davey Allison. He's an eight. He needs an eight or less. He rolls a seven. Bobby Hamilton was hoping for something higher. But he doesn't get it. So Davey Allison passes. The check. And Harry Gant, who wasn't involved in that, remains the leader. And now he's going to face... We're out of this part between phases three and four we have two consecutive challenges so first challenge to harry gant is coming from 11 ernie irvin okay so it's going to be irvin challenging harry gant and they're both 11s so irvin's challenge is at a zero he needs a seven to 12 to take the lead he rolls an eight and we have a new leader in ernie irvin Pass, and it's now Irvin. Okay, and like I said, two consecutive challenges, and Ernie Irvin is going to be challenged by 43, Dave Marcus. Okay, Marcus is a 6, Irvin's an 11, that's a minus 5, it's an automatic failure. But Marcus remains on the lead lap, and Ernie Irvin remains the leader. All right, now we're going to the contact check. This is the last phase before we get into the closing lap action. And there's actually two parts to this. Okay, so first we're going to select a random driver. We're going to see if there was any contact out there. And remember here, contact, there's no change uh, to the contact ratings. So we're going to check a random driver and four adjacent, 
and we're gonna check contact on them. And that's a 54, and that's Davy Allison. It's Allison. A lot of activity in this part of the track, and here I guess too. All right, so Allison's 12 o'clock is Kyle Petty. His three o'clock is Stanley Smith. His uh, six o'clock is Sterling Marlin. And his nine o'clock is Hutt Strickland. Okay, so we're looking at the um, contact avoidance rating which is in the yellow box. Davy Allison is a 10. He needs a nine or less. If he rolls a 10, which is equal to his rating, he goes. He has some contact, has to come in, probably goes behind the wall for a little bit, who knows, and uh, he gets a yellow lap marker, meaning he's down several laps. If he's greater than his rating, he's forced to retire. So he needs, contact gets no change here, so he needs a nine or less. He rolls a five, and he's safe. So he passes. Kyle Petty is a six. He needs a five or less. He rolls an eight and he's forced to retire. That's a fail. DNF. Next is Stanley Smith. He's a four. He needs a three or less. He rolls a five, and Stanley Smith is forced to retire. It's been tough going for the rookie Smith so far this season, so it's another failure and another DNF. Next is Sterling Marlin. He's a 10, so he needs a nine or less. He rolls an eight, just avoids contact. He passes, and the last check will be Hutch Strickland. He's a seven, so he needs a six or less to be safe. He rolls a nine, and he's out. So we lost a few drivers there, three, uh, with this contact. So that's a failure for Strickland and a DNF. And Ernie Irvin remains the race leader. Okay, so now we're going to have pit stops under caution. This is the second part of phase four. And uh, just like before, uh, we will go up against the race leader. We'll select a random driver for adjacent, go up against the race leader, looking at the blue pit crew rating and using the quality pass matrix. So it is a 12. That's going to be Harry Gant. So it's Gant. His 12 o'clock is Lake Speed. His 3 o'clock is Rick Mast. His 9 o'clock can't be Irvin because he's involved in this. It wraps all the way up to the top to Larry Pearson. And his 6 o'clock wraps over to the right, and it's Rick Wilson. Okay, so we're all going up, at least for the first check, up against Ernie Irvin. Okay. And we're looking at the blue pit crew rating. So Irvin is an 8, Harry Gant's a 9. He's challenging at a plus 1. He needs a 6 to 12 to take the lead. He rolls a 3 and fails. So Ernie Irvin remains the leader. Next is Lake Speed. Lake Speed is a 6, Irvin is an 8. Challenge is at a minus 2. He needs a 9 to 12. He rolls a 3 and fails. Ernie Irvin remains the leader. Rick Mast is an 8. Irvin is an 8. Challenge is at a 0. He needs a 7 to 12. He rolls a 9, and Rick Mast takes the lead for the second time in the race. So Mast passes, and he's the leader right now, and he'll be going up against Larry Pearson. And where is Larry Pearson? Uh -huh, I lost him. He's up here. And Pearson is a four, Mast is an eight. He's challenging at a minus four. He needs a, that is, Pearson needs an 11 or 12 to take the lead. He rolls a nine and almost does it, but fails. Rick Mast remains the leader, and the last check will come up against Rick Wilson. Rick Wilson's a seven. Mast is an eight, challenging at a minus one. Wilson needs an eight to 12. 
He rolls a four and fails. And it's Rick Mast is the race leader after the pit stops under caution. And he will now face a challenge. Before we go into the closing lap action phase, which is the fifth phase of the race. Okay, so his challenge is coming from 54, Davy Allison. Uh, Allison and... No, he and Mast... Did... Yes, he and Mast got into it earlier in the race, and Mast took the lead. So here's Allison's chance to get some revenge here. And uh, Mast is a 9. Allison is an 11. He's challenging at a plus 2. He needs a 5 to 12. He rolls a 6 and has the lead again. So he passes Rick Mast. Gets a little revenge. And Allison is once again the race leader. Okay. Now we're into the closing laps action. We're going to see if there's a, going to be another mechanical check. And here at Talladega, we look at the last highlight event table. That'll happen on a roll of 9 to 12. And we roll a 10, so there is going to be another mechanical check. So that's a yes. Now these, this closing lap mechanical check is only the leader. So mechanical gets a plus 1 here. Mechanical checks are red, so that makes Davey Allison a 10. He needs a 9 or less to... Pass that check. He rolls a six and passes. So it's Allison. And he passes and remains the race leader. Now he'll face another challenge. And that challenge is coming from 15, Derek Cope, who's had quite a disappointing season, in my opinion, so far. Uh, Derek Cope's a 7, Allison's an 11. That makes Cope a minus 4. He needs an 11 or 12 to take the lead. He fails. And Davey Allison remains the race leader. Now we're going to see if there's going to be another contact check. So here, uh, just like the mechanical check, here at Talladega, that'll happen on a 9 to 12. Roll a 3, so that's a no. So that phase is NA, and the next phase, uh, or part of uh, phase five, the closing laps phases, is pit, crews on, uh, pit stop under caution, excuse me. Well, since we didn't have any contact, that's going to be NA. So Allison is leading all through these parts of the phases, and he's going to face another challenge. And that challenge is coming from 50... Two, Ken Schrader. Ken Schrader, who has three wins this season. So Schrader is going to challenge Allison. They're both 11s. Uh, so this is coming out of zero. Schrader needs a 7 to 12. He rolls a 5 and fails. And Davey Allison remains the race leader. Okay, so now we're going to see if there's going to be a pit crew check. And just like, uh, well, no, actually, this is a little bit different here at Talladega. That'll happen on an 8 to 12. And we roll a 6, so that's also a no. So that phase is avoided. And it would have been void if there had been pit crew, uh, pit stop under caution, but that didn't occur. So we rolled to see if the uh, pit stops would happen. We got a no because we rolled a six, as I just explained. Okay, so now um, Davey Allison still remains the race leader, and we're going to see if there's going to be some late race green flag racing. That'll happen here at Talladega on a 5 to 12. And it's a 5, so we're going to have some late phase or late race green flag racing now the way this works here late in the race it's the leader four adjacent and none of those drivers can be lapped okay so it's going to be of course 
Um, Davy Allison. Oh, and one random driver. Forgot that one random driver. All right, so uh, so Davy Allison. His twelve o'clock is Jeff Bodine. His three o'clock wraps over to Richard Petty. His six o'clock is Sterling Marlin. His nine o'clock is Daryl Waltrip. And the random driver. 46, Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott. All right, so it's going to be Davey Allison against Jeff Bodine. They're both 11s. So the challenge is out of zero. Jeff Bodine needs a 7 to 12. He rolls a 7 and takes the lead here late in the race. So it's a pass. Now Richard Petty's going to be challenging Bodine. Petty's an 8. Bodine's an 11. Challenge at a minus 3. He needs a 10 to 12. Rolls the 12, and Richard Petty takes the lead late in the race. Now it's Sterling Marlin. He's an 11. Petty's an 8 once again. Actually, uh, Marlin's challenging at a plus 3. He needs a 4 to 12. He rolls a 9. It was short-lived, but it was nice to see Richard Petty have the lead. But it's now Sterling Marlin. So Marlin passes. He has the lead. It's Darrell Waltrip is his challenge. He's an 11. They're both 11s. Waltrip needs a 7 to 12. He rolls a 5 and fails. Sterling Marlin remains the race leader. And now it's Bill Elliott. Once again, both 11s. Uh, Elliott needs, they're both 11, so it's a 0. Elliott needs a 7 to 12. He rolls an eight and takes the lead from Sterling Marlin here near the end of the race. So it's Bill Elliott in the lead now. Pass. And after all that green flag racing, it's Bill Elliott. And we're down to the final challenge. Now, the way this works is we take the uh, four, adjacent, excuse me, four adjacent drivers, not including any lap drivers, to the leader. And they all go up against the leader, or excuse me, no, the highest rated driver uh, goes up against the leader and we break ties with the rules of priority. All right, so Bill Elliott's 12 o'clock comes down here to Alan Kowicki. All right, so he's an 11. His, I can tell you right now it's going to be Kowicki, but we'll go through it. All right, his 3 o'clock is Jeff Bodine. He's also an 11. His 6 o'clock is Dave Marcus. He's a 6. That's out. And his 9 o'clock is Terry Labonte. He's a 10. Alan Kowicki breaks the tie with Jeff Bodine because he is at the 12 o'clock position. And that is uh, using the rules of priority. He breaks the tie there. So this final challenge is going to be between Bill Elliott and Alan Kowicki. Both drivers are in the top 10, I believe. Let me check that. I just want to double check that for myself. Yes, Bill Elliott and Alan Kowicki are seven and six respectively. So this is uh, some exciting racing here on this hot July afternoon in Talladega or at Talladega, the Die Hard 500. It's Bill Elliott and Alan Kowicki. They're both 11, so this is a zero, or the difference is a zero. Elliott needs a 7 to 12 to pass Kowicki, or excuse me, Kowicki needs a 7 to 12 to pass Elliott and win the race. Anything else, Bill Elliott holds him off and wins. And it's a four, and Bill Elliott holds off Alan Kowicki, and he wins the Die Hard 500 here at Talladega. Talladega. So Elliot is the race winner. All right. So we'll keep that marker there and uh, get to what I always call the fun part. 
So we're going to take Bill Elliott, of course, off because he won the race. And we'll leave the marker there. Alan Kowicki, who lost the challenge, finishes a second. Now we look at the drivers who were potentially eligible to take part in this. And we remove them by uh, rules of priority. So Jeff Bodine was at 3 o'clock. Dave Marcus was at 6 and Terry Labonte was at oh, 10. So it's going to be Jeff Bodine. Marcus is a 6, but Labonte is going to get a top 5 finish here with 10. And so is Dave Marcus. All right, so we got our top 5. Now, we go along the groove, which is considered the bottom groove. And we remove drivers um, going clockwise based on uh, race rating. So coming around, it's going to be Ricky Rudd, Michael Waltrip. They're both 11s. Ernie Irvin, Harry Gant, Rusty Wallace is lapped. So is Mark Martin. So go to 10s. It's Bobby Hamilton, Dale Jarrett. No other 10s. Nines. No nines. Eights, Mickey Gibbs. Good finish for him. Rick Wilson. Richard Petty. That's eights. Now we look for sevens. Derek Cope. Sixes. Lake Speed. And the only car left on that groove who is not lapped is Larry Pearson. So now we move in. To this groove and go clockwise so looking for 11s we got Davey Allison Sterling Marlin Ken Schrader Dale Earnhardt Morgan Shepard and that's it for the 11s now 10s Bobby Hillen Jr. 9s Joe Rootman Rick Mast Brett Bodine and the only other driver on this groove is Ted Musgrave and then we come straight in and go clockwise. It was going to be Darrell Waltrip with the 11 and then Jimmy Spencer. Now we go back out to uh, the bottom groove and we remove lap drivers based on priority. And that's going to be Mark Martin, Jimmy Means, and Rusty Wallace, who got in some trouble early mechanically. And then we add the uh, cars who did not finish the race. So here at Talladega on July 28, 1991, for the Die Hard 500 in a replay, it's race 17, winner Bill Elliott, the rest of the top five, Alan Kowicki, Jeff Bodine, Terry Labonte, and Dave Marcus. Six to ten, Ricky Rudd, Michael Waltrip, Ernie Irvin, and Harry Gant, and Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton's probably going to be in the points lead again. Hard to say. Hard to say because uh, I'm not a mathematician and I can't work those numbers out in my head. But these two guys were 5th and 6th or 6th and 7th. Ricky Rudd's in the top 10. Ernie Irvin's just outside of it. Harry Gant's in the top 10. We'll have to figure it out. And figure it out, I will. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Max's Cards and Dice Dugout. If you hung around with me tonight, I appreciate your patience and thank you for spending the evening with me at least for a little while, about 40 minutes, a little bit less than that. And I'll be back again in the near future with another replay video. And until then, take care.